and I must point out that LeVar Ball was right again. He said it all year very long. He said it from the start of Lonzo's year with the Lakers. LeBron's coming to L.A. I don't know. Maybe they got some connection. Maybe maybe LeBron gets a kick out of LeVar because now they're quote-unquote teammates. Very interesting. Before I unleash all of my deeper feelings about LeBron as a Laker, quick cameo while everybody's joining in from our daughter Hazel, the daughter of Ernestine and I, the Maltese Falcon. She's not really a Falcon. She's just a Hazel. Hi, Hazel. Thank you. Got to get my nose clean before I go on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. You're a good girl. Say hi to Facebook. Look. Look. Say hi to Facebook. Say hi to LeBron. He's our neighbor here in L.A. Thank you. Say hi to LeBron. She got her hair cut. She looks pretty good. Right? Hi. Nobody knows it, but she's going to get trained by Caesar Milan. Right? Is that breaking news? Can we say that? She is going to get trained by Caesar Milan. We're going to be subjects of Caesar Milan because Hazel, she gives her mom a hard time. Not her dad, just her mom. Thank you, mom. Thank you, Ernestine. Thank you, LeBron, for this news tonight. <laughs> we are back on Undisputed tomorrow. Got to shut my door. After a forced week off, we got bumped by World Cup. Not that I don't love the World Cup, but I love my show more than I love the World Cup. Sorry soccer but we were bumped for a week but we're back tomorrow fox sports one 9 30 eastern on fox sports one undisputed shannon sharp versus me less shannon sharp he is a big lebron fan and i'm going to be very interested to see how Le Shannon likes lebron being his neighbor we're right here um I'm about a mile from the Fox Studios where we do Undisputed, which is down on Pico and Avenue of the Stars, west side of Los Angeles. And all you have to do is go, I don't know, a couple of miles under the 405. In fact, I play golf uh, occasionally at Brentwood Country Club, which is just a couple of blocks from one of LeBron's houses, which is just a couple of blocks from the other house. So I guess all the stories about Bronny... LeBron's oldest son going to Sierra Canyon High School next, I guess next year. Wait, is he eighth or ninth? I think you can go there the whole way, but whatever. But, but it looks like all that was true. Remember when Gary Payton spilled the beans on that one? Oh, Bronny's going to be at Sierra Canyon. Um, along with Kenyon Martin's kid and Scotty Pippen's kid. I can't remember all the kids that are out there, but I guess all that was true. So, what do I think about LeBron James going to the Lakers? I am not surprised. I've said on Undisputed many times. I always just felt like LeBron was born to be a Laker. Who was LeBron's ultimate role model in basketball? Who was the player to whom LeBron was most compared? He's the next. Not Michael Jordan. Magic Johnson. I always said, just stop it with the Michael Jordan comparisons because they're wrong. LeBron shouldn't be in the same sentence, the same breath, same universe with Michael Jeffrey Jordan because one guy's the mentally toughest competitor in the history of sports, and the other guy, LeBron James, can occasionally be the mentally weakest competitor among superstars in the history of sports, as we saw at the end of game one of the recent finals. By the way, LeBron's team got swept, if you've swept that under your carpet. And at the end of game one, I thought Cleveland had Golden State on the ropes, and then LeBron just lost it, threw a tantrum on the bench, melted down. That's LeBron. But is he a wildly gifted offensive basketball player who now plays no defense? Yes. Did he ultimately belong finishing his career as a Laker? Yes, he did. I'm looking at an image of LeBron in a, on television. I think I'm on NBA TV um, in a Laker jersey. He just looks good. He looks good. He needs to be Magic's protege. He needs to finish it off with Magic Johnson. I like that. Obviously, <laughs> a lot of people thought it was going to be with either or Kawhi Leonard or Paul George. Was I shocked that Paul George stayed in Oklahoma City and announced it a big Holiday, not holiday, but a summer bash, hype fest, 
hosted by Russell Westbrook in my hometown of Oklahoma City, actually um, out at Lake Arcadia, which is just on the outskirts of Oklahoma City. Was I surprised that they announced last night that Paul George was going to stay in Oklahoma City and commit for three more years? I was not, because Paul George is too smart to join LeBron James in Lakerland. Even though Paul George is from Los Angeles, from the area, even though Russell Westbrook is from the area of Los Angeles, he's right down the highway, down the 405 from LAX, from the airport. I believe it was Hawthorne. Even though those, those two have L.A. roots, Paul George would be the first to tell you he didn't want to be LeBron's help. He didn't want to have to ride shotgun with LeBron in Los Angeles because it's just too hard. The, the media is mostly pro-LeBron James. They're blinded by LeBron James. They are quick to protect and defend LeBron James. And so they're just equally quick to condemn LeBron's lack of help. So Paul George, who will have some bad games occasionally, as he did against Utah in Oklahoma City's first round exit, he wanted no part of that. He knows he would be the scapegoat. He would be he would take the brunt of the criticism. Every time he had an off night, it'd be, well, it's Paul George's fault, or as I call him, George Paul, because he occasionally turns into George Paul. He couldn't beat LeBron head-to-head -head because he's a poor man's LeBron. And there's no way he could survive in Lakerland on that stage, staple stage, the Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant stage. He couldn't survive it riding shotgun for LeBron James because every other night he would be condemned for, oh, see, LeBron still doesn't have enough help. Paul or George, whichever way you want to turn his name around. So who does that leave to come to L.A.? I'm going to be surprised if the team I root for, by the way, I root for this team. I'm wearing it tonight in honor of LeBron James because he's a huge Cowboy fan, which just drives Shannon Sharp crazy. And you can see us tomorrow unleashing, launching into this debate style at 9.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1, 9.30 to noon Eastern. We are back in business tomorrow on Undisputed. But the point is, where does that leave LeBron? What if, what if the Lakers can't make that deal for Kawhi Leonard? And I'm done with Kawhi as, as a Spurs fan. I, you know, look, I, I, I would love to see that. You know, I would love to see that. I would love to see LeBron partner up with a guy who quit on the classiest organization in sports, the most conservative patient medical training staff in sports, cleared Kawhi Leonard to play midway through the year, and he flat out quit on him with nothing more than a thigh bruise. Is that the guy you want to bet on? Want to bet a max contract on that guy, LeBron? Good. Be my guest. I would love to root against LeBron and Kawhi Leonard next year as Lakers. That would do my heart good. But I just have a gut feeling it's not going to happen. My Spurs sources say that they're just as intrigued at this moment by the Sixers' nuclear packages they can offer because they got draft picks. They got great picks. They got that Sacramento pick next year. And they also they got a bunch of players, too. And... Obviously, Philly got left at the altar by LeBron. What was that about today? There was a story from ESPN that, that the sort of Philly, the Sixers contingent, management contingent, coaching contingent, had flown all the way to L.A. to meet with LeBron. Well, obviously, he'd already decided to sign with the Lakers. It had been widely reported for weeks that that's where he was heading. He was the, the Lakers were the Vegas betting favorite. So... Why would he even entertain Philly's request? Why, why would he allow them to fly all the way across the country and meet with him, if in fact the report is true, when he's, he's already done it? It's, it's, it's a done deal, and Clutch Sports, his company, announced it just about, what was it, about an hour ago? So wh why would you do that to Philly? That's just dirty pool, low blow, and... Philly goes from, oh, we could get LeBron and Kawhi next year to go along with our two nuclear weapons, young nuclear weapons, obviously, and Embiid and Ben Simmons, 
and now they're back to the drawing board. But would they like Kawhi? Because Brett Brown has coached Kawhi in his past as an assistant under Popovich in San Antonio and has some connection. I don't know how well he knows him exactly. But I'm told that the Sixers believe they could talk Kawhi into committing long-term to them after next year. He has one year to go on his contract, obviously. Would Boston get back in the Derby for Kawhi? I don't know. But now it brings us to the big guys. Lakers still have slots, uh, you know, another slot open. LeBron obviously took the max, max, max. This is his set for life deal. He's going nowhere. Other, he's going to finish in L.A., I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Can he do what Tom Brady's doing? I don't, I don't think he belongs in the same breath with Tom Brady and, and play into his mid-40s. I don't know, but I doubt it very seriously. It just sounds like this is it. This is the end of LeBron. He's going to finish it out in La La Land as a Laker. He's got the houses, kids would be in school. Maybe he wants Bronny to play with him at some point on the Lakers. Just feels like that to me. But who could help LeBron immediately? Well, you got the two big guys on the market. You got DeMarcus Cousins. I do not call him Boogie. I've met Boogie and I know Boogie, but I don't call him Boogie. I call him DeMarcus because it just, just irritates me. People call him Boogie like they, they know him or they're buddies with him. I, I don't even like the nickname. He is DeMarcus Cousins to me. That's what I call him on TV. And I think he would be a great fit for LeBron if, in fact, he wants to leave his fellow Kentucky product, Anthony Davis, in New Orleans. I thought they were pretty good together. You can make a case that Anthony rose and shone after DeMarcus went down. And obviously, DeMarcus still has injury risk with his Achilles tendon because you never, ever know how that's going to bounce back. But I do think he'd be a good fit with LeBron. I do. I think he would look up to LeBron. I think he would stay in line a little bit more for LeBron. I think LeBron would enjoy feeding him in the post, getting him free on pick and rolls for dunks or shots. Obviously, DeMarcus could step back and shoot threes occasionally, shoot mid-range occasionally. He's pretty good at it. I think he's a great young player. He still hasn't figured it all out yet. Is he volatile? Would LeBron calm that part of him down? I think so. I think it'd be a great fit. And by the way, Clint Capella is still out there. Clint Capella is a horse, man. He is just a horse. He is just a workhorse. He's just, I mean, he's got thoroughbred in him, but he also has workhorse in him. He really grew on me last year. First, I, I wasn't sure, he, you know, going back a year or two years because my Spurs just devastated them a year ago. Wasn't sure he knew how to play, but he's just figuring it out. And he plays so hard. And, and he plays so every possession all out and attacks the glass. And I just like his demeanor. I like his makeup. I, I like his I like his basketball character. Strong to me. And he would be a good fit as a guy who does the dirty work, man. He could do the dirty work, and I assume the Lakers are going to keep all those the same kids unless they're going to trade them for Kawhi. I'm sure that's still on the table, but maybe they just want to go free agent, free agent. Not sure how the math would work. They'd have to get rid of some of their money, I would think. That's way over my head. But it sounds like... LeBron James is going to play with Lonzo Ball. Again, unless he's going to be traded. I don't know if it's a done deal. Again, I'm, I'm shooting in the dark. But I'm telling you that LeBron respects Lonzo Ball. I'm telling you LeBron does not like anything about LeVar Ball. And there must be something in place to keep LeVar out of the mix. Some arm's length agreement where... Magic has said, I can handle LeVar and keep him away from you, LeBron, if, in fact, they're going forward. So, to me, minus Paul George and maybe Kawhi, now that the Sixers will focus their efforts on getting Kawhi Leonard, I assume, because all of a sudden the East just goes wide open. I would rank it right now, Philly a little, eh, I don't know. Again, is Kyrie going to be fully healthy? Is Gordon Hayward going to be fully, health, fully healthy? 
I guess I would give Boston a small nod there, but Joel Embiid is now the best player in the East. And I'm I'm big on basketball. One man rules. One one man in, in five on five basketball can change the world and change your life. And Joel Embiid is now the best player in the East. He's just I love Kyrie Irving, but he's what, six two? Joel Embiid is seven feet tall and can do everything you want him to do. And if he can keep himself together off the court, and if his body holds up, and by the way, don't underestimate this, speaking of body, he's holding up, the Sixers team doctor, whose very job it is to sort of babysit Joel Embiid and try to keep his minutes down and keep him healthy, especially when he goes away to, say, play the All-Star game, that same surgeon gave Kawhi his second opinion. That's why the Philly connection is strong. And don't forget that Kawhi's uncle lives in southern New Jersey near Philadelphia. And I, I think he's got some connections there. He's a Philly fan, a Sixers fan. So there's another reason for Kawhi to be there. And all of a sudden, you know, the East is winnable because the beast of the East, LeBron, just went to the West. Now, my bottom line here is, even with, let's do, let's just go ahead and do DeMarcus Cousins joins LeBron with those kids. Well, what if you keep the kids, Ingram, Kuzma, and Lonzo? What if you keep them, Josh Hart? What, what if you keep all of them and you add LeBron and Cousins to that mix? Could you beat the Warriors? No. You just couldn't. Because don't, don't forget, do not underestimate, LeBron's going into his 16th NBA season and plays no defense. I don't know. I'm not sure DeMarcus plays great defense. I'm not sure the Lakers would be defensively even in the same ballpark with Golden State. So Golden State would still be the prohibitive favorite. Houston, they, they had a crushing loss last night. They could lose Capella also, but they lost a reason. That was a big part of who they were and what they did. Three and D guy who made things happen. You know, just a tough, been there, done all that competitor. It's pretty shocking. He went for $15 million to Phoenix. Just got his money. Said, I'm out. He didn't want to stay and make special things happen. Special almost happened against Golden State. But CP3 obviously stayed for the max, max, max in Houston. And, boy, they, just, they lost a big piece. And if they lose Capella, it's just going to be basically CP3, James, fun to watch. They, they played together much better than I thought they would. And, and yet, boy, if, you, if they lose Capella and Ariza, whew. P.J. Tucker was great playing defense, shooting threes. He had one big hot-handed 22-point, three-point game. But I don't know. Houston is diminished. Houston is going to fall back in the pack. The Spurs are still acting like they want to get back in this. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. I'm waiting for R.C. Buford to make miracles, as he always does. He's the best GM in basketball. They did sign Marco Bellinelli. You can laugh, but he was the perfect Spur in 2014 when he shot LeBron and company off the floor in the final or helped shoot them, everybody shot them. Patty shot them. Every time I looked up, somebody else was making a three, Danny Green. But I don't think the Spurs want to go away. I think they want to be part of this. They, they want to at least be some kind of a factor. Hold on, i got to refresh my, my computer here to see what's going on. Okay, anything new? And that obviously brings me to the poor Cavaliers. I don't know. You know, there's a part of me, I want to see LeBron suck it up, gut it up, and just say, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to take this team that a lot of people liked at the trade deadline, and with a year of experience, with the various, I don't know how, who was coming back exactly, how they are going to mix and match, but the Clarksons and Hoods, and Larry Nances, and George Hills, and the, the whole crew that they had, obviously Kevin Love is still there, Kyle Corder is still there, Tristan Thompson is still there. It, it, you put that back together, and 
you know, again, could would LeBron still have been the favorite in the East? I still think he would have been. I, I said that on Undisputed the, the week before we took off or forced off by the World Cup. But Chris Broussard and Shannon Sharp disagreed with me, but I still think they would have had a real chance for LeBron to get back to his ninth straight final and, of course, lose to Golden State. And LeBron wanted to be in Hollywood, and I don't blame him. I just, to, you know, it's been a year and three quarters. I left Bristol, Connecticut for Los Angeles. I would started my career here at the LA Times. I'm in Los Angeles speaking to you right now. West side of Los Angeles in Century City. It's just beautiful. The weather today was just sensational here. It's just sensational. It, it gets hot, but there's coolness to it on the west side in Brentwood where, where LeBron is going to live. It's just like, I don't play much golf, but, but occasionally I play golf and it'll be 90 degrees on some random weekday Tuesday afternoon, it'll be 90 degrees. And if you get in the golf cart and go back against the, the ocean breeze to drive to your ball and you drive fast, it'll get chilly. Seriously, there's there's cool in the air. It's, it's a great place. Everybody wants to, to play and to stay here. Kevin Durant has two places in the LA area, Malibu and Hollywood Hills. And Russell Westbrook's from here. Everybody wants to play in L.A. And finally, LeBron, with all of his Hollywood dealings and his production company, said, I want to end my career there. And I get it. He belongs here. But my gut feeling is, just my gut feeling tonight, and i got to see how this sorts out. Number one, I believe LeBron James will never win another ring. And number two... I could eat these words, and I need until tomorrow to, i got to put an asterisk on him, but I don't think he's going to get back to another NBA Finals. I just don't think he will. I could be wrong about that, but Golden State is just so formidable right now, and they got it rolling, and it's just going to be difficult for LeBron. Remember, he's, he's an aging player. Still great on offense, no defense. And... The Lakers just paid him astronomical cap eating money. I know it's a soft cap, but still, it's a lot of money to commit to a guy in his 16th year. Is it worth it to the Lakers? Sure. He was born to be a Laker. When he ended up with a statue outside Staples, like the other greats, I don't know. Can he do enough at the end of his career to merit a statue? I don't know. I feel sorry for Cleveland tonight because left you high and dry once. Then you left Dwayne Wade high and dry and came back. And by hook or crook, by luck or no luck, when Draymond got suspended, that series flipped around on its head and they came from 3-1 down and they did win a ring. LeBron James won a championship for the land. Can't take that away. Give you that. But then he left you high and dry one more time when it just it would have been the feel-good story of the year if LeBron had just said, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in the East. It's getting a little better in Boston, and it's getting a lot better in Philly, and it's starting to get better in Milwaukee. But LeBron's just going to ride out his career. That would be a feel-good story if he just said, I'm going to stay home and finish at home. But... The lure of La La Land, of Hollywood, it's just too much. And I, I'm not going to be a hypocrite tonight because it, it drew me in, sucked me in, sucked me all the way across the country. I love it here. My wife, Ernestine, native New Yorker, she comes and goes. She loved the weather today. She usually comes in and says, boy, it's a beautiful day. It's, it's just almost always a beautiful day. My favorite all-time bumper sticker here in Los Angeles, ho-hum, just another day in paradise. That's what it is. Are there earthquakes? Yes, there are. Is there terrible traffic? Yes, there is. Is it still a great place to live? You better believe it is. So I can't blame LeBron for making somewhat of a lifestyle choice of, of wanting his kids and his wife in his clutch sports, I assume they're all going to relocate here now. I've seen Maverick Carter out here several times. I love Maverick Carter. He's dynamo from Wall Street to Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. He is a dynamo, and LeBron is so blessed to have him on his side. 
running his production side, his production company. Brilliant. Just, just a stud. Young stud, Maverick Carver. But I assume they're all going to locate here, relocate here from Cleveland, but I don't know that for sure. But I get all that. It's just... It, it's just who will wind up with LeBron because Paul George said no and Kevin Durant said no. And that surprised me. And there were reports, in fact, I think my friend Stephen A. on First Take reported, was it Stephen A.? I can't remember. We were off last week. But somebody at ESPN reported, as, as I kept talking about, that LeBron should do this. LeBron should get a hold of KD and say, hey, what's up, man? Let's come to L.A. Because remember, tell Two nights ago, Kevin Durant was unrestricted free agent. That would have changed life. If Kevin Durant leaves Golden State to join LeBron in Lakerland, now you got something. Now LeBron has a chance to win another couple of rings. But Kevin Durant stayed with Steph Curry, with Klay Thompson, and with Draymond Green, and with Andre Iguodala, and, and with all those those so potent, powerful backups that they have. So many young players, that McCaw, he's a stud kid. That I just, I don't see what LeBron's going to do. I, I don't see how he's going to get back to another finals. It's just going to be hard because he's now diminishing returns because of his age. So now it comes down to no Kevin, no Paul George. I don't know about Kawhi, but it doesn't feel like it's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just not sure that the Spurs would let it happen. They don't want to do any favors for the Lakers in the Western Conference. They've been rivals for, what, 40 years, 30 years, whatever it's been since they came out of the ABA. I've been a fan since the 80s. And... It, it just feels like there has to be some other deal in place. Maybe something's broken so far, but I don't see it yet. But it just feels like there has to be another puzzle piece that I don't know yet. Can't wait to talk about this tomorrow at 9.30 Eastern Time on Fox Sports 1. Undisputed returns to the air tomorrow as we got bumped by the World Cup last week. And... The other piece to me that makes the most sense would be DeMarcus Cousins. So I'm looking for that to happen. I think Clint Capella is still an option, big man option, but it feels like it's still going to be LeBron and the kids. And you know what? Maybe in the end, LeBron just didn't want the, the, the big hype buildup. Maybe he wanted to take a little pressure off. Maybe he wanted one year of lesser expectations where nobody really, he wanted to play for a team that, wasn't expected to get to the finals and this team wouldn't be expected to get to the finals maybe he would like being the underdog maybe he would like to take a year off from the finals and just try to revitalize and enjoy the weather in la and enjoy the lifestyle in la and then as you know again there's always the chance that that Kawhi goes somewhere else or stays in san antonio and then joins that group a year from now, there's always that chance because that was Kawhi's publicized goal. Maybe, but in the end, I'm happy for LeBron. I'm sad for Cleveland. I feel bad for Philly that he made them fly all the way as a group to try to talk to him and recruit him today when he's obviously already decided that he was going to L.A. as so many people thought. And yet, in the end, I'm happy for LeBron because he belongs in that purple and gold. I've always been kind of a Lakers fan, even in my days in Dallas when they were arch rivals against the Mavericks. It's just hard not to be a fan. I just love Magic Johnson. I'm the biggest Magic. I'm a slightly bigger Michael Jordan fan, but second on my list is Magic Johnson, Irvin Magic Johnson. And I'm happy for him because that will be a great connection. It's, it's almost like the torch has been passed from Magic to LeBron. They're kindred spirits. They're two Ps. They work together. They're, they're of like mind. They're two of the greatest passers we've ever seen. And I like it that they're now on the same team, even though Magic's obviously just overseeing. That all feels right to me. LeBron looks right in purple and gold. 
The truth was he never really looked right in wine and gold. He, 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 he was just a cavalier because he was from Akron. But he belonged in L.A., and now let's see what other pieces to the puzzle Magic and Rob Polinka continue, will continue to put together. I can't wait to see how it unfolds as the stories break over the next 24 hours. And I can't wait for Undisputed tomorrow, 9.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. We are back from Los Angeles. I can't wait to hear Les Shannon Sharp on LeBron James, the newest Los Angeles Laker. How will it play out with LeVar? I don't know. I think Magic, I'm sorry, LeBron, I think LeBron has a lot of LeVar in him. Seriously. He's a showman. He's a drama king. He's a diva. So is LeVar. LeVar's turned into nothing but entertainment. LeBron says things for shock value every other night. I mean, it's it's not strive for greatness. It's strive for drama. I, I think actually those two work together. I, I kind of like it. Magic, LeBron, and LeVar all on the same team. Poor Lonzo just kind of goes along for the ride. What a great kid is he is. And, and LeBron respects his game, and I do think they can play together. It's going to be the new focal point of the NBA universe right under our nose at Fox. Staples is just down the 10, as they call it, I-10 from Fox. I may have to take in some of those games. For sure, I will be back on Undisputed tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern. Join us then. No World Cup tomorrow on Fox Sports 1. We're back. I'll see you then.